Fertilizers, as we know, are very important to plants because they are the minerals that plants take up through their roots, usually, not always, but through their roots. And from those mineral, minerals, they make other compounds important for plant growth. When we're thinking about fertilizers, it's also very important to remember that just adding fertilizers to plants will not necessarily make give them a benefit, will not necessarily make them happy. Other things are important, such as soil improvement, air improvement, all of those things, irrigation, all of those things are important. Fertilizers is just one component of the necessary steps in making plants healthy and productive. When we're adding fertilizers to the soil, and soil is the usual method that's used when fertilizers are added because plants take up fertilizers primarily through their roots. When the fertilizers are in the soil, when they're found in the soil, whether it's coming from a chemical fertilizer or from the minerals that are already in the soil or from soil improvement, the roots take up these minerals through a wet medium, the soil water that surrounds the soil particles. The roots then pull this water inside the plant. Most of these minerals are transported inside the plant with the water from the soil. So the first thing that has to happen when fertilizers are applied to a soil is that they must go into solution inside the water. That is, they must dissolve. Just like sugar dissolves in coffee, salt dissolves in water, mineral fertilizers must dissolve in the water, in the soil, in order to become available to the plants through their roots. Then from the roots, the plants then push, extend these minerals up inside the plant through vessels, through open vessels inside the stems and the leaves, much like the blood vessels that we have in our arms and in our legs and in our body. Those plants begin to distribute those minerals through a number of different processes and they're pulled up through the plant in this stream of water that eventually is lost through the leaves to the air. So that we know when we put plants in a room, the humidity of that air increases. It increases because the water being pulled from the roots through the soil and carrying minerals is pulled through the leaves and then lost to the atmosphere surrounding the leaves and the minerals remain behind inside the plant. Once these minerals stay inside the plant, the plant can use these minerals to build other compounds and to build building blocks for which it can stay healthy and productive. Flower and fruit. So whenever we buy fertilizers in some sort of a package or a box or a container, on the outside of the bag will be three numbers. By tradition, these numbers stand for nitrogen, the first number stands for nitrogen. The second number stands for the amount of phosphorus, and the third number is the amount of potassium. <clears throat> well, those three ingredients are nice, but a plant really needs 16 or 17 of these minerals in order to remain healthy. Mineral fertilizers typically will announce on the outside only three or, 40, three or four different types of minerals. Some of the more expensive fertilizers that are used, uh, that come in small packages because they are very expensive, will contain a large number of different nutrients but the only way that you'll know this is by looking at what's inside the container or the package. And that's listed on the ingredients uh, in the fertilizer. But by tradition, a fertilizer 
if it is claiming to be a fertilizer for plants, must say on the outside the amount in percentages of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Now I want to be very clear about something. And this is extra information that you don't need to be involved with too much, but just to be clear and accurate. The percentage, the first number, the percentage of nitrogen is actually the percentage of nitrogen that's in the bag itself or container. The second number, the phosphorus, percentage of phosphorus, is not really phosphorus. It must be decreased to equate it to phosphorus. It really is equivalent to a, a oxide of phosphorus called diphosphorus pentoxide, P2, P sub 2, 0 or O sub 5. In order to get the proper amount of phosphorus, it will be reduced by a certain amount. But by convention, and that's available, information is available anywhere, but by convention we refer to the middle number as phosphorus. The third number is designated as K with the letter K. It would be the reason it's K is used for potassium is because by convention by chemists chemists all agree and on the periodic table of elements potassium is designated with the letter K. The letter K stands for potassium and you know how confusing it would be if we said that the percentage of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium was N, P and P. Well, that would be terribly confusing to many of us, but if we understand it's the percentage of N, percentage of P and percentage of K, meaning potassium, so when we refer to it, and oftentimes people who are horticulturists will say the NPK of a fertilizer. These are the percentages of nitrogen, the percentages of phosphorus at some level, and percentages of potassium. But always remember, those are only three of the 16 or 17 elements needed by plants. You might ask me, well, how do fertilizers manipulate plants? How can we use a fertilizer to manipulate a plant? If a plant needs fertilizer or minerals from the soil, if we just add them, then the plant will do whatever it should do. But that's not true. By selecting the proper fertilizer, we push or encourage plants to do what they might do naturally. So for instance, when we're talking about the first number, the N on the fertilizer bag or container, the percentage of nitrogen, when we're talking about nitrogen, the primary type of growth that is pushed by nitrogen are leaves and stems. Why is that important? Well, it's important because if you add only nitrogen to a soil and you have a vegetable or a fruit tree or a plant that is only going to produce leaves and stems, then that's a good choice. But what if a plant also produces flowers and fruit? What if a new cutting needs to produce roots? What if we need to improve the health of a plant? Does nitrogen do that? Not necessarily so. If we give a plant too much nitrogen, we can harm it. So by knowing the type of fertilizer that we need to apply pushes the plant in the direction we want it to grow. So remember, when we're pushing leaves and stems, the first number, nitrogen, is important. What about flowers and fruit? Phosphorus. The middle number, the middle number, the percent phosphorus is important because the amount of phosphorus contained in a fertilizer will push a plant to do several things.